Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Akim. Shalom, Shalom. It's your brother Ariel from GMS Tampa Bay 12 and GMS 13 Rulers Shabba. First and foremost, I want to start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to our Lord Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Barakate Yahweh, Barakate 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 Yahweh Shai, Call Hello Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kudash. Double honors to our elders and apostles of GMS, Great Millstone, who rule and teach well. Salutation to you, Akim, out there pushing his word in truth and sincerity. And of course, shalom to any sisters as well, too, that are listening in meekness, quietness, and humbleness. May the Lord be with you and your families. And again, it's your brother Ariel from Tampa. Again, with another lesson to the spirit of power, Yah, by Shem Yahweh Shai. I'm um, just going to put this one up here. Um, um, it's not a live show. Uh, for some reason, the live thing isn't working too well, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and upload it. Uh, normally uh, Like I used to do back in the day Once upon a time But uh, you know As you can see by the title of the video You know we, we're, we're talking about our power Our Lord You know um, Yahweh And uh, the terror of the Lord You know And and this is something we don't take lightly We we believe in our power We believe in the power of the universe The God of Israel We believe that he's the power of mercy um, but there's also a flip side of that coin as well, too. He's a, he's a power of, a, you know, he's a, a wrathful power. We're not going to get into all the scriptures. So I'm just going to bring out a few Psalms and uh, maybe a couple other ones as well, too. And uh, we'll wrap it up. Um, but, you know, really, honestly, you know, when we out here, we push this word out. When we see us putting these videos up, when you see us on the highways and byways all together, or some brothers by themselves on the highways and byways, we're not doing this to get views. We're not doing this to please men. We're doing this to please Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. Out of what? Fear. And if you go into the book of Ecclesiastes, let's start with that, actually. Passing it. Actually, wait. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. You better know where I'm going with this. Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13, it says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God or fear Yahweh and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So the whole duty of man is to fear the most high and do what he says. That's what you're supposed to be out, out here doing. You're not supposed to be out here just pleasing yourself, pleasing your flesh. You're out here supposed to be pleasing the Lord. And when you go into the Bible, there's all types of um, scriptures and instructions that show you what the Lord is looking for you, looking for, and how to please Him. All right, it's really no question about it. It's 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 it's, it's super clear. And yes, it does take a little bit of, of um of strength. You know, you have to get out of your old ways. You know, you you got you gotta you gotta watch other men. You gotta understand. All right, this is the order. But ultimately, you're doing it out of fear of the Lord. You hear the word, you woke up, and now you're trying to do what's right. And you're not doing you're not doing it again. You're not doing it just to be cool. You're doing it to please the Lord because you know you've been going off all your life. Now you're trying to go back and fix it. You know, repent. You know, going into repentance. All right. Uh, one second here. I don't think I remember where it is, but hold on a second. Um. Yeah, I'm not ready. Hold on a second. I'm trying to find something. I don't remember where it is right now. Might have to skip it and quote it. Uh, give me two seconds, man. Give me two seconds. Uh, let's see. Come on, I found it. This is the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. It says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Okay? Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, because we understand the mercy of the Lord. We understand that the Lord is beautiful and, and God is love. We understand those things, all right? But we also understand that the heathen used to call our power, used to call the Most High, Alashaja, which basically goes into uh, um, the Almighty, or, or great power, great demon-like power. You know, what kind of name is that? That's a that's an ill title. That's what they used to call the the God of the universe. That's what, he, that's what they used to call Yahweh. Yahweh, which is his name. He is. The heathen used to call him basically a great demon like power. You know, almighty. 
And, and that being said, knowing the terror of the Almighty, we persuade men. What do we do? We persuade men to come into the truth like we came into the truth. We heard men preaching, and we were like, hold on, stop the presses. What are these men talking about? What did I just hear? Black, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the Israelites according to the Bible, and salvation is only for them? Keep going? Go on? Go on? That's, a, that's what happened to us? Oh, the video's over? Is there another video? Oh, click. I know I got a Bible somewhere in this house. Let me find that. Oh, hell yeah, found it. Pause, on pause. Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. So out of the terror of the Lord, men persuaded us. I was persuaded because men had the fear of Yahweh Bashim Yashai on them. And I saw that fear, and I recognized that fear as something relevant. And what do we do? We shed off everything we learned in the world. We threw it away. And we say, you know what? The Bible is the truth. We need to understand the Bible. This is the, this Bible is it, clear that it's for us. Let's get an understanding. Let's follow these men that have an understanding. And once we got an understanding, the fear of the Lord was put upon us. And what do we do? We found a way to get on those highways and byways and preach. We found a way to put up these videos because that was the order. We're doing this out of fear of Yahweh Shem Yahushai because we understand the terror of the Lord. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. That's what it comes down to. We persuade men, but we are made manifest unto the Most High. And I trust also, and and I trust also are made manifest in your conscience, your consciousness. All right. So let's go into the Book of Psalms. With the swiftness, it's in the book of swam, uh, swamps. Uh, this is Psalm 93. I'm just gonna read the whole chapter because it's super short. This is Psalm 93, verse one. The Lord Yahweh reigneth; He is clothed with majesty. The Lord Yahweh is clothed with strength, wherewith He hath girded Himself. The world also is established that it cannot be moved. Thy throne established of old; Thou art from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord Yahweh is on high. Is the Lord the Lord Yahweh on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. Excuse me. Yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. The Lord Yahweh is high. The Lord Yahweh on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. Yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. All right. The Lord Yahweh is mightier than all things because the Lord Yahweh is the creator of all things. And this is not a power that you want to be on the left hand side of. You want to be on the right hand side of this power. Otherwise, you know, goodbye for you. And we say that humbly because we do our best to stay on the right side of the Heavenly Father, stay on the good side of the Heavenly Father. And it's, and it's easy to go off. This flesh is weak. You're tempted every moment of the day. Everything happens to you. And you could get put into a position where you, you're just completely just bugged out now. You got to ask the Lord to continue to give you strength and, and, and knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Because that's what's going to be the stability of the times that are about to come upon this earth. It's knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. If you don't have those attributes, you're not going to make it. All hell is about to break out. And if you're not in the right spirit, you're going you're gonna to fall into, into the hands of the living power. And, and that's your ass. So it says, verse 4, Psalm 93, The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. Right. That's our power. All right. That's just a synopsis of the Lord. Um, let me go into another psalm. Psalm 89. Psalm 89. We'll start at verse... We'll start at verse 6. It says, Psalm 89, verse 6. For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? Nobody. It's a rhetorical question. Nobody. Nobody can be compared unto Yahweh. No God is with him. He stands alone. 
There is no, there, nobody falls into that category of the Most High. Nothing can, can be compared to the Most High except is. <laughs> he is. That's it. He is. There is no comparison. There's no tangible comparison onto the Heavenly Father. Nobody. Nobody stands in that same in that in that same uh, uh what's the word I'm looking for? Category. La Petite Bond, Montreal. All right. It says I read it again, verse six, Psalm eighty nine. But who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? The most high is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. And who are the saints, brothers? We the saints, the Israelites, specifically the ones out there doing the work, the elect, the hopeful elect. All right, I say we, we say that humbly because we don't know. We're just doing the work of the Lord and whatever happens, happens. All right, so it says what? The Most High is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. So if you're doing this work and you're doing it out of fear of the Lord, then guess what? You may be part of that number. When the saints come marching in, you want to be part of that number. Here it is, you're doing the work of the Lord out of, out of fear. You're not doing it. You're not doing it trying to be cool. You're doing it because... It, you truly feared the consequences of, of staying idle. So what do you do? You pick up the Bible and you go on those highways and byways, you put on your, you put on your beautiful garments. Or right, you put on that sackcloth. Really, the beautiful garments goes into the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. All right? But we put on our garments, the sackcloth, because what? We're in the morning. This is the horrible place to be. And it could get and it's going to get worse. But if you have true fear of the Lord, guess what? The Lord may have mercy on you. And that's what we're looking for. Ultimately, we're looking for the mercy of the Lord. We're not looking for the wrath of the Lord. We're catching hell right now. Why do we have to catch hell when everybody else is catching hell? Fuck that. We want the Lord to have mercy on us. So what are we going to do? We're going to please the Lord. We're going to do what the Lord asked us to do. And we're not going to complain about it. We're going to do it. And we're going to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Lord, Yahweh, and in, in, in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai. Isn't that the right thing to do? If you truly and honestly fear the Lord, when did you do that? Well, we're doing it. It says, the Most High is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of, of all them that are about him. Con. Yeah, he's supposed to be revered, the Lord. All right? Above all things, the Lord is revered. Verse 8, O Lord Yahweh, God of hosts, who is a strong, um, who, who, who is a strong Lord like unto thee? Or to die faithfulness round about thee. Nobody. Okay. There's no entity out there on the level of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. There's not one. Okay. Read it now. Verse 9. Thou ruleth the raging of the sea. When the waves thereof arise. Thou stillest them. That's right. The Lord has the ability to, 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 um, to tame the mightiest of, of, of elements. All right. This is the Lord. This is the power. The Lord God, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. The Lord is stands alone. He's almighty. And we fear him. We praise him. Okay? We worship him through his son. All right? And his son is our big brother. And we miss him. And we want to see him come back. We want to see him get his kingdom and get the crowns. We want to see Yahweh Shai get the crowns like he deserves. But here it is. We're in hell right now. But when the Lord comes back and gets his crowns, it's, hey, the rest of the world is going to understand and know who the true nations are. They're going to fear us. Like we fear the Lord, they're going to fear us. And they're going to fear Yahweh. Uh, first and foremost, they're going to fear Yahweh. And they're going to fear the ones that the Most High puts in charge over them, which is going to be, Lord willing, us, if we continue on in the same manner that we're continuing. The Lord's going to have mercy on us, and we're going to be part of the elect, and the whole world is going to fear us through the, through the Lord Yahweh. In the name of his son, Yahweh Shai. Because we're we're sons. We're sons also. Okay, we're sons also. Let me get something else. Uh, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 21. Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. So we're talking about the rest of you, the nation, okay? The rest of the Israelites out there who don't even understand that they're Israelites or know that they are Israelites but really don't care. They don't have to fear the Lord on them. We're talking to you, okay? 
It says, it says, verse 22, Fear ye not me, saith the Lord Yahweh? Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by perpetual decree, that it cannot pass it? And, and though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail? Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it? So do you not fear this power? Y'all you you, you are joking? Like you don't really, you don't fear God? You don't fear the most high? Here it is, you're talking about only God can judge me. I, you know, I'm a God-fearing Christian. You know, you got the cross tattooed on your chest and your arm or whatever the case is. You got Cedric Borgia tattooed on your other arm. And, and, and you don't really truly fear the Lord. Do you not fear the Lord? Here it is, you, you're getting all these instructions from men of the Lord and you're doing, you're doing the complete opposite of it. We're talking about the power that can that can still uh, rage and rage and see. Ones that causes earthquakes, hailstorms, hurricanes, media showers, you name it, you name it. The Lord could do it, and the Lord has done it, and He will do it again. And people are going to continue to die because of their iniquity and their stubbornness, their rebellion. You're all going to die. And this is what we're telling you, man. Just get right. Come back and come back to the heritage. Come back into this heritage. You all fell out. We all fell out. We all made mistakes. But it starts by coming back, putting off the old man, putting on the new man. And serve the Lord Yahweh by Shimi Yahweh in truth and sincerity with all fear. That's the first duty of man. That's in the Bible. I just read it. So who's alive? Um verse 23. Jeremiah 5 23 but this people hath a revolting and rebellious heart they are re revolted and gone you people are gone I'm talking about you so called blessed Hispanics and Native Americans you y'all are gone as it says in the scriptures uh, the whole head is sick and nothing can do to fix you the only thing that we can do to fix you is, is, is put curses on you so the Lord could ultimately take you out of this world because a beautiful thing is coming if you die on this side here a beautiful thing is coming on the next side so if the Lord doesn't have mercy on you on this side, ultimately true mercy is still going to be given to you because you're going to come on the other side as, as an Israelite. And you're going to be in the kingdom of heaven. And you're going to be perfect. But you don't hear this. You don't want to hear this. You're a rebellious people. Our people are hard-headed. You try to have one Jake open up a business, have one black black guy, or a so-called black guy, open up a business in the hood. All these other black people are going to come in the hood and they're going to want discounts. Or they're going to rob them. Or, they, or, or they, they're going to talk shit. Or they're going to criticize every little thing about his business. Y'all rebellious. Y'all evil. Y'all the worst. Here it is. The, the Bible tells you don't eat pork. And you do the, the complete opposite. You eat pork. And, and you go to church. You eat pork and go to church on the same day. You will leave church and go straight to IHOP and get a sausage biscuit. The Lord is not dealing with those kind of people. The Lord is going to destroy those people. He is going to have mercy on certain people out here that don't know. You know, be they may, you know, friends of the family, you know, friends, you know, friends of the elect, rather. But you don't want to, if you know when you heard this truth and you're still doing all this rebellious shit, you think the Lord's going to have mercy on you? Absolutely not. The Lord's not going to have mercy on you. Do you believe you deserve mercy? When you sinning, purposely sinning, hey, there's no cloak for your sin at this point. Let me see. In the book of John, St. John. Wait, say that. Uh, hold on. St. John, chapter 15. Am I not mistaken? Verse 22. Uh, St. John 15 and 22. This is the Lord Yahweh speaking, the Son of God. All right, it says, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. You know why? Because the Lord gave them a warning. And the same way the Lord gave them a warning, we're giving you the warning. So you can't say that you didn't know. If you didn't know, that's one thing. But here it is. You watching the video? You watching the video, right? You about to make a comment, right? Well, guess what? You know now. You're supposed to be following the Lord's statutes commandments to the best of your ability. The things you can do, you do them. The things you can't do, you pray the Lord for forgiveness for those things. That's why you're supposed to hate this world because 
you can't follow the Lord perfectly. Okay, you can't you can't keep the Lord perfectly out here because you're in a wicked world. So you should be perpetually pissed. And you got to put that fake smile on because you got to go to work. You got to deal with family. But in your inside, your your heart of hearts, you're pissed off. So what the fuck? You're supposed to be in that. You, that's the kind of spirit you're supposed to hate your life. You can't serve the Lord perfectly. This sucks. But what you can do, you better be doing it. Because ultimately, there's no cloak for your sin anymore. You can't say you can't you can't use the the, the excuse. Oh, I ain't know. The books of the law. You, know, you got Leviticus. You got yeah Exodus. You got all that. Um, Deuteronomy. All the laws are in there. If you don't understand, watch the videos. Brothers got videos on the law. Man, stop playing with it. You know not to commit adultery. Don't do that. Don't fall into temptation. You got to pray to the Lord to keep that spirit off of you. Oh, oh, it was illegal to eat pork? Oh, I guess I got to stop today. Yeah, you got to stop today. Stop playing with it. Shrimp was good. Okay, yeah, cool. Shrimp, lobster, all that shit used to be tasty. Well, guess what? It should repulse you now. Now that you heard that the Lord hates that shit, it should repulse you. And when you smell it, you should get sick. I used to love all that abomination shit. I used to love that shit back in the day, bro. But once I heard the Lord hated that shit, now I can't even smell it without getting vexed and wanting to punch a wall. Yeah, you know, you y'all don't really truly fear the Lord. Back in the book of Jeremiah, chapter twenty, uh, chapter five, verse twenty-four, neither say in their heart, "Let us now fear the Lord, our power, that giveth rain." Both to the former and to the latter in this season, he reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Yeah, it says, neither they don't even say, let's fear the Lord. He's the one that gives us rain. He's the one that does this and that for us. But you don't fear that Lord because the same one that gives you all the beautiful things for you to live is the same one that could take it away and make you starve to death in your fucking doorstep like a dummy. It's the same power, the same one that gives, the one that taketh away. He giveth, he taketh away. He kills, he makes alive. He wounds, he heals. It's the same power. And you playing with him. Guess what's going to happen to you? Guess, guess. Verse 25. Your iniquities have turned away these things and your sins have withholding good things from you. Because you want to do whatever the hell you want to do. So now when the time of trouble comes, you have no cloak, you have no hedge around you. You out there with no armor. Like you need a video game. You 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 playing Final Fantasy? You one of those video games like that? You got you got to put armor on. Then you go into an island with this tough ass beast. Well, guess what? One hit's gonna take nine 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 damage off your ass. And you're gonna die. You're gonna have no hedge around you. You got it. You gotta do right now while you still have liberty. You have to do it now. If you don't do it now, you're gonna die. This is a fair warning. You have to do it now. You have to follow the Lord. Come out of this fucking world and come into righteousness. Do it today. Do it today. Don't put it off anymore. You keep putting it off. Hey, hey make no tarrying to come to the Lord. What's that in, in your pocket for? Y'all not scared. Y'all, you know what I'm saying, son? I think it's in your pocket for. Uh, in the book of Ecclesiastes. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, this is Ecclesiasticus or Sirach. Chapter five, verse seven. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. So mean if don't it don't don't wait to turn to the Lord. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord, and put not off from day to day, for suddenly shall the wrath of the more of the Lord come forth, and in thy security that thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. You put off from day to day. Oh, uh, you know, yeah, I, I I get what y'all saying. I like what y'all do. You know, I will come out here and do it with us. Stand with us. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm thinking about doing that. Okay, keep thinking about it. But guess what? If you keep thinking about it and you don't do it, guess what's gonna happen? The Lord's not gonna have no mercy on you in the day of vengeance. And the day of vengeance is the day of Jacob's trouble. And that's the day of the Lord when the when the Lord comes back with the chariots with with the spaceships. All right, and he comes and destroys our enemy. Well, guess guess what? You're gonna be part of the enemy that's gonna be destroyed because you didn't want to serve the Lord. You didn't care enough. You did what you want to serve your own belly. You don't want to serve the Lord. So what's the Lord going to do? He's going to turn you into dust. He's going to nuke you. He's going to nuke you. You're going to be destroyed by a nuclear missile or a laser beam or famine or some horrible way to die. Why Why risk it? Why gamble, bro? 
I'd rather gamble on this and put all my money, all my, you know, bet everything on, on, on the Lord. Instead of just playing with it and tarrying. The Lord said to make no tarrying. Don't put it off day to day to day to day. No, you heard about it. Get into it now. Yeah, you so, of course, you got to be built up through the spirit. All right, you learn these lessons. All right, get built up and fully persuaded. But once you have that true understanding, you need to figure this thing out. All right, and you're going to be praying. You're be praying to the Lord daily, all day. Pray, prayer, bros. That shows fear, man. All right, let's end this here. Let's go back to the book of Psalms, though. Um, book of Psalm, chapter 68. Psalm chapter 68. Uh, we'll start at uh, Psalm 68, verse, the last verse, verse 35. Oh God, thou art terrible. <laughs> what a way to start the verse. It says, Oh God, O oh power, thou art terrible out of the ho out of thy holy places. The power of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people, the Israelites. Blessed be the Most High. The Lord is terrible. All the horrible things you see going on in this world right here is, be, is, is all comes from the Lord, Yahweh, God. God is love, yeah. That destruction he does, well, guess what? That's love. That's love unto his elect. That's love unto the righteous. Because when he destroys the wicked, that's love unto the righteous. All right? When that fly flies into the spider web, well, guess what? That's love onto the spider, but it's hate onto the onto the fly. So we 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 give praise when we see destruction, when we see death and destruction. We praise the Lord out of fear because we don't want that to happen to us and our loved ones. So we pray to the Lord. We give honor and glory to the Lord. Call hello, all praise. Like how about Shem Yahushai? For that, for that destruction you did. For those 37 people that got killed in the mine, all right? By some attack. All praise, all praise the most high. When every when you see things happen, we praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. While y'all scared, we praise the Lord. Because we're scared too, but we praise the Lord. We give thanks to the Lord for that. The Lord is terrible. Lord is terrible, and that's not a and that's not a diss to the Lord. That's in the Bible. The, the Most High God is terrible. Not terrible as he, he sucks. No, he's terrible as he 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 brings terror. He brings terror. He's terrifying. Terror, terror is a is it's, it's an emotion, and that's an emotion that you don't want to feel. That's a negative emotion, and guess what? The one you call God is terrifying. You ever been in terror before? True, honest to God terror I never have and I don't want to feel it Not like that Not like certain people feel When you know you're about to die Like you know death is imminent And there's no way out of it And your adrenaline is pumping you, you, your, your, your pupils dilate You know that's, that's terror man You're going to die There's no way out of it You're going to die That's scary bros that's scary, bros. You know, nobody, nobody who's, who's righteous should have to go through that. And that sucks, man. Because certain, certain brothers are going to have to go through it, but they're going to get a beautiful reward on the other side because they did the work of the Lord. We'll end, it, we'll end it with Psalm 99, and we'll wrap this thing up. So this is Psalm 99, verse 1. The Lord reigneth. Let the people tremble. He's <laughs> talking about God, the most high God. He's in power. Let the people tremble. Holy shit. Yeah, that's the that's the God we worship, man. The one that brings death and destruction on the earth. We worship him because we don't want to feel that pain, man. It says, the Lord reigneth. Let the people tremble. So all these nations out here are going to be trembling when the, when the Lord's truly in power. He sitteth between the cherubims. Let the earth be moved. The Lord Yahweh is great in Zion. And he is high, high above all the people. Right. There's nobody on the level of the Most High. He's high above all the people. The people are all of the Most High. All right, they come from. Verse 3. Let them praise thy great and terrible name, for it is holy. And that's what's going to come. 
Eventually, the Lord is going to have the whole world praise his great and terrible name. When the Israelites are finally in power, well, guess what? The heathen are going to pr praise the, um, the Heavenly Father. All right? They're going to praise, and anyone that has a problem with it is going to be put to death. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 12. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly destroyed, or utterly wasted, it says. So the Lord is going to destroy anybody, any nation, and when the kingdom of heaven is established, they don't, they don't, want, they don't want, want to serve in truth and sincerity. Guess what? The Lord's going to bring a famine onto that land, bring a drought. All right? Bring disease, plague. And we're going to have those powers too, Akin. That's a beautiful thing. Hey, man, we done. So with that, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, Bashim, Rakak, Wadash, Double Lines, Sword, Elders, and Apostles of GMS, Great Millstone, who rule and teach wells. Shalom to you, brothers. Shalom to your sisters. Peace. Shit.